what Mike Marion Auburn gal. He said, absolutely, I can. Yeah. If she's good looking enough. Yeah. Third and five. Very important for Spencer Pennington to make good decisions in the game. Turnovers they cannot afford against a team as good as Auburn. And off right side. There's a flag down, and so is Johns. No game in the play. We'll see about the uh, penalty. Will Herring, number 35, makes the stop. I made the point earlier about field position. That is such a big part of Alabama's game. Because they're limited offensively, because of their injuries and their inability to throw the football very effectively, and how good their defense has played this year. They have to play the field position game. So they're going to be a little bit more conservative. They're not afraid to punt the ball and try to help their defense out by pinning the opponents down deep in their territory. And again, the worst thing that can happen is turnovers and give Auburn the short field. They've got to make Auburn today play on the long field, drive the ball 80-plus yards Illegal to score. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 11 was not on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now Steve Landis, our referee, the penalty declined. Landis in his final regular season game as an official, uh, retiring after 12 years as one of the referees in the SEC. So the penalty declined, fourth down, and Bull Freeland will come on. And uh, I'm thinking back to our conversation with Dave Rader before the Arkansas game a month and a half ago. There is nothing wrong yeah. with a putt. And Bo Freeland's strength is hang time. And this is one where he's got to just get the thing up in the air and hope his guys can get down there and surround it inside the 10-yard line. And keep it out of the hands of Carnell Williams. Well, that's very, very high. This one's going to be quite effective. And Carnell Williams gets out of the way, but it does take uh, an Auburn bounce back near the 20-yard line. It's not quite as effective as yeah. I thought it was going to be. Well, it had the right height, just the wrong bounce. 16-yard punt. Auburn gets the ball for the second time. They trail by three. <laughs> Alabama held Auburn, forced them to punt on the first. Three and out, their 65th of the year. And uh, here is their defensive line. Bates, Griffin, Clark, and Anderson. The linebackers, Roach, Wortham, and D'Amico Ryans, and the secondary. Ramsey Robinson, Roman Harper, Charlie Pepper, and Anthony Madison. All of them led by Joe Kynes, defensive coordinator. And wouldn't you know, the second possession, now they're going to their 30 look. Only three defensive linemen, three linebackers, and five defensive backs in. They really like this 30 package as a changeup. Campbell out of the backfield. Mark Anderson was there to make the stop. His second big play of the early going. When we talked to Tommy Tuberville and offensive coordinator Al Borges, they told us that this is the best defense that we've faced all year. There's no question. They're fast. They play hard. They love to play the game. And as you look at their improvement from last year to this year, a lot of the same guys, the same coaching staff, but they're just doing their job so much better. And a moment ago, Kenneth Darby into the locker room. So perhaps that was, uh, we don't know yet, Tracy Wilson is uh, checking on uh, his status. Well, he had a left ankle problem coming into the game. He didn't practice at all this week. And timeout has been called by the Auburn Tigers. They lost six in the last play. It's second and 16. We come back. Into Pasadena. Back to Vernon Todd. You know, Tim, it's, uh, that's why we have you back there to sort mm -hmm. all that stuff that's out. Right. Well, you just keep, keep an eye on it. Rivalry Saturday, and this is a pretty good one. This one smokes right here. Second down. Williams and Brown in the backfield and out of the shotgun. Now they flank Ronnie Brown out. Here comes the pass. He's got it. He gets a great block, but good pursuit. And Brown is going to be nailed for a loss all the way back at the 11-yard line by Charlie Pepper. What you will find with this Alabama defense is they are very fast and they're very disciplined. And the key to defending Auburn is being disciplined. They're a defense that tries to go to gaps and maintain their gaps and not get out of position. You see Ronnie Brown try to cut it back. Now against an undisciplined team, he would break that all the way out the backside. But this is a disciplined Alabama defense that stayed where they needed to be to make the play. Third and 19. 
Play clock's down inside of 10. They still don't have the play or the right formation. This, this is a little bit of a discombobulated Auburn football team right now. They've had to use their second timeout in about the last minute and a half. This represents a great start for Alabama. Mm -hmm. Eighty-six thousand plus, predominantly dressed in crimson and white, and they are the happy bunch right now. It's third and nineteen. And one of the reasons Auburn's showing some confusion is Joe Kynes is mixing up his defenses. They're back to the three-man line again. This possession, they've changed two or three times, and they've created some problems for Auburn. And they will bring two and drop nine. And there's a little pass, a flick out to Carnell Williams, who is belted at the 19-yard line. D'Amico Ryans, number 35, and Cornelius Wortham, number 16. And again, they know how valuable 24 and 23 are. So they're going to rush three and drop everybody else out and then just break down. Let them throw underneath, but let's be in position to make good, solid tackles in the open field. They get them hemmed in, they run to the football, and they force another punt. You see, Cody Bliss has been almost on the inactive list. <laughs> But uh, punts for the second time this afternoon. Another good punt, too. And pro throw over the fair catch, grabs it at the 32-yard line. 48-yard punt, nothing on the return. Get complete coverage from all of today's games and read Dennis Dodd's take on the hottest topics in college football. It's all at CBSSportsLine.com. No word yet from the locker room on the state of Kenneth Darby. As uh, Todd mentioned, he came into this game a little gimpy. Yeah, he had a left ankle, and in watching practice on Thursday, he didn't do anything with the team. He was on the sideline doing some exercises, and, and that's huge because Aaron Johns is a, a guy that's got some talent, but Kenneth Darby is an exceptional running back, and uh, their chances of winning without him, pretty slim. Backs in the eye. Pennington will throw on first down. Goes deep right side. Pro throw. Man coverage. Carlos Rogers. And Rogers this time did not yeah, slip. You're right. And he had perfect position. And the ball was thrown a little bit inside. When you're going against an outstanding cover corner, you've got to put the ball in the right place. You don't want a, a go route to be thrown back to the inside where the defender can fall back in and make the play. You want it over the outside shoulder so the receiver can separate to the ball and make the catch. Tyrone Prothrow, 5'8", Carlos Rogers, 6'1", and the ball didn't help Prothrow out either. Look at that, 16 of 59, 27% for the year against Robert. And here's uh, Aaron Johns heading to the left. It'll bring up a third down. The big game out on the West Coast. Here's more from Tim Brando. Right you are, Vern. Cal's Aaron Rodgers hits Robert Jordan here 29 yards. You know, they're propped up more by their loss to USC than anything else. 7 to nothing. If Cal wins today, it'll be their first undefeated season at home since 1950. Back to Vernon Todd. All right, Tim, thank you. And on the sideline, Kenneth Darby has returned from the locker room. What do you think people in this state think when they hear Cal Stanford being called the big game? <laughs> Here's a toss to LaRon McLean, the fullback. He's another of the gimpy running backs for this Alabama team. Montavis Pitts, number 19, with the tackle. We go down to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. Actually, they took Kenneth Darby to look at his stomach, not his ankle. They said they, he, he had some sort of stomach injury. They won't tell me anything more. They're kind of giving us the runaround, but if I get any more information, obviously, I'll bring it to you. All right. Thank you, Trace. Kenneth Darby. Jogging the sideline. Another big opportunity for Bo Freeland. He has to have a big game for Alabama to keep field position advantage. Good Boy, one right here. Nails it. Carnell Williams. Little hesitation. Look at the downfield coverage. It was terrific. Here comes Williams. There he goes. What wonderful special teams coverage for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And what they did, again, last week, Carnell, a couple big punt returns against Georgia. You get the high kick. 
And now watch the Alabama guys when they run down here, watch them all break down into good football stances and just hold their position. Don't get out of your lane, break down, make them go sideways, and then at the right moment, close in for the kill. I mean, that is excellent discipline on the punt coverage team. And field position, look at this. Auburn at the nine yard line. Jake Slaughter is in at fullback. Here's the change of play. Handoff Cadillac Williams with Slaughter leading the way right side. Good pursuit. There was Ramsey Robinson, number 17, to make the tackle. Ramsey Robinson, sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama. The average start for Auburn, their own 21. Yeah, and that, you know, you see that and say, well, it's only a difference of 11. But in a game like this, with the limitations that Alabama has offensively, that's huge. They've got to play to their strengths, and their strength is their defense. Second down five, Slaughter is still in. He's the fullback, caught to the left. Silas Daniels starts in motion number 85. Play fake, Campbell, good play fake. Looks downfield for his tight end, has to settle short for a Roma should do, and it is incomplete. Third and five. Now, Carnell Williams, uh, Offensive Player of the Week after the brilliant game he had in the win over Georgia. 101 yards rushing, caught four for 20, threw a touchdown pass, and had four punt returns. But today, look at the numbers. Uh, 24... Uh Alabama knows who 24 is and what he can do. 10 total yards, and they're doing a great job of just staying in good football positions until they get help to make the tackles. Crimson Tide have forced two three and outs in this first quarter. Campbell back, steps up. Campbell down. Todd Bates, his fifth sack of the season. And the third three and out of the first quarter forced by the Alabama Crimson Tide. And Auburn coming in has only allowed two sacks in the last four football games. Here's Bates over here. He's just going to beat his man. The right guard, Danny Lindsay, a quick move. And a huge sack. And again, field position right now totally in Auburn's favor. Cody Bliss to punt for the third time with 45 seconds to go in the opening stanza. Not that effective. See what the bounce does. Pro throw. Still going. What a block he got. Oh, boy. Here he goes. Bliss can stop him. Alabama at the 15-yard line. What a block. Matt Raglan. A wide receiver who is slow getting off the field, but what a block. He sold out to help Tyrone Crowther. And what a great decision by Tyrone Crowther to catch it off the bounce. He gets away from Carlos Rogers, and then Raglan lays out Carlos Rogers. And that was all that Crowther needed to get to the corner until he met up with the punter. What a return. Again, if he lets that thing go on the bounce, Auburn downs it, and they flip field position. He picks it up off the bounce. He gets one big block. And Alabama right back in scoring territory. Ragland, number 85, clears pro throw for a 40-yard return and a first down at the 15. Darby's back in the game for He's Alabama. Deep back in the eye. Play fake, Pennington. Pumps, looks, incomplete, almost intercepted. Last week, this Alabama team, again, their margin for error is so small. They were winning 10-6 against LSU. A questionable call, a no interference call. The ball's intercepted by Corey Webster and returned 44 yards. It flipped field position. This wasn't the ensuing possession, but a couple possessions later, they had bad field position, a fumble by Pennington. Cameron Vaughn returned it, and that whole thing turned. They had a chance to go up 17 to 6, couldn't capitalize. My gosh, it was the wishbone formation with Brokaw <laughs> back there. Holy cow, here's a flag. I think we might have another face mask penalty on Auburn. Looked like Pear Bryant trying to reinvent yeah. himself in the 70s. Face mask. The wishbone. 
Well, we saw Pro throw in at quarterback, and he didn't look too good. Now he's in the backfield position. It's the old wishbone. Pennington gives. He's got two lead blockers in front of him, and Kevin Sears, number 40, is the guy who grabbed the face mask as he was going to the ground. I can't help but smile at the, at the wishbone being run. Al Borges, who's the new genius, uh, deservedly given credit, started his high school coaching career as a wishbone coach in Salinas, California. He even had to smile then when he looked out and saw that. I guarantee you, Daryl Royal and Emery Villard are smiling. Al Borges looks like an old wishbone coach, doesn't he? He's got a pretty good West Coast offense that has been held in check this afternoon. That's the end of the first quarter with a score of 3 0. We'll return to Brian Denny Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Brett, the oldest of the three Britt brothers from Coleman, Alabama. Senior playing his final game. Inspirantia, inspirational leader of this ball club. And uh, with a gimpy left leg, we've talked a lot about injuries to this team. He's on the sideline right now. Second down and one at the six. High formation, Darby the deep back. He gets the handoff, moves it down inside the five near the four yard line as Alabama will face uh, a third down and they can get the first down without the touchdown. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge with Tracy Wolfson. You think important here that uh, they get seven? Absolutely, because again, the margin for error for this Alabama offense is very small. When they get down there, they've got to capitalize, and I don't mean just field goals. They are inside the 10-yard the line now. They've got to get the ball in the end zone. Not an easy task. This Auburn defense has only given up 12 touchdowns the whole season, only one as a rushing touchdown. Darby did get the first down, so it's first and goal inside the five. That one rushing touchdown was against, of all people, Kentucky. High formation, movement. See, now, again, they, they just shot themselves in the foot. Movement on the left side of the Alabama offensive line. Instead of first and goal on the five, they're going to be first and goal on the ten. Before the snap, ball start number 80 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That's the uh, the man who is starting a tight end today, Trent Davidson, his first start. He is starting because Clint Johnston couldn't go with a concussion. David Cavan is out with a back injury, and we just saw LaRon yeah. McLean limp off the fullback. Well, he hurt his right ankle against LSU last week. Did not practice much, was good to start the game, but just hobbled off. So Josh Smith is in, in his place. Here's Pennington, hands it off to Darby. Cuts back inside, gets back near the five. Travis Williams, the middle linebacker, with the stop. It'll be second down. You could not have scripted a better start for Alabama in this football game. The defense, rock solid, three and outs, field position, absolutely uh, in Alabama's favor. They've had the ball three times. They've been in Auburn territory three times, but they must score a touchdown here because this Auburn team is too good. They'll come back. They've got too many seniors, too many good weapons on offense. You can't beat them with field goals. Second down. Here's the option play, pro throw. They fired in the end zone. It's tipped and incomplete. Will Herring, the senior from Opelika, Alabama, got his right hand up and knocked it away. Going for that tight end, Trent Davidson. He was open. Davidson was open in the back of the end zone, but Herring able to get his right hand on the football before Davidson able to make the catch. A nice awareness play by Will Herring. Third down, Herring, a one-time high school quarterback. Cadell is in, number 11, timeout called by Spencer Pennington. That is the first timeout used by Alabama. We're early in the second quarter, and the Crimson Tide leads by three. On third and goal from the five, LeRon McLean back on the field for Alabama. So also is Wesley Britt at left tackle. 
Now this team may be short on depth. They may be short on talent right now. They are not short on heart. This is a tough football team, mentally and physically. Pennington. Three-step drop. Goes across the middle. Intercepted. Oh, boy. Intercepted. Picked off by Kevin Sears. The only good thing for this, for Alabama, is they still have the field position edge. <laughs> they needed points. They didn't get it. But at least their defense comes out with 97 yards behind them. They're trying to get it to the tight end again. He's going to just hang here in the middle. Davidson. And Spencer Pennington was looking at him the whole way. The ball was deflected away by La uh, Derek Graves. And the interception made by Sears. Sears with the pick, the ball in the three. Pennington has thrown his eighth interception of the season. Ronnie Brown. Three backs. And here's a handoff on the left side to Ronnie Brown, number 23. Let's take another look at that interception, Todd. Uh, again, a lot of people in the middle of the field. Pennington kind of bird dog and where he was going with the ball and Derrick Graves read the eye of the quarterback two passes in a row were deflected by an Auburn defender this one resulted in an interception Mike Shula thought the ball hit the ground should have been ruled incomplete and that last running play by Auburn by far the best running play that they've had in the ball game today game seven and second and three Brown again the deep back gets the handoff tries left tackle gets back and moves it out for a first down, and that is the first Auburn first down of the ball game. Partly because of their field position on this drive, and partly because they haven't had much success doing anything else, they went to a little bigger lineup. A couple tight ends, a couple extra backs in the backfield, and let's go power football against this Alabama defense, and they were able to run it successfully for a couple uh, plays and get the first down. First and ten. Alabama score a 42-yard field goal. Three defensive linemen, four linebackers in now for Alabama. Again, a little different look. They've shown this the last couple weeks. Slaughter is the fullback. Brown gets the handoff and goes left. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Joe Kynes was telling us yesterday this... Alabama defense was ranked number one in the country, and uh, they gave up some yardage to LSU. They are second in the country now by seven and two-thirds of an inch. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure that's, that's what Joe said. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit more than that, but they, they gave up 283 to LSU, and the team that passed them, North Carolina State, only gave up 127 to Florida State. And so uh, that's why they're number two now instead of number one. And let me amend my statement. Yards. Oh, that sounds good. Okay, uh -oh. intercepted. Picked off, left side. Anthony Madison. Take that. Jason Campbell is now intercepted for only the fifth time this year. And the Crimson Tide defense comes up big again. Well, we saw a tip pass result in interception for Auburn. Same thing now for Alabama. Jason Campbell going to his alternate route. The ball is tipped up in the air, and Madison comes down with the interception, and Alabama right back inside the 10-yard line. It was actually tipped by Cooper Wallace, the tight end, not able to make the catch, and Madison with the interception. 19-yard return for Anthony Madison. His fourth interception of the season. It's first and goal from the six. I bet we see three runs here for Alabama. There's one. That's Darby. Not much. Brett Evans made the tackle. Well, here we go again. Alabama has to get a touchdown. I mean, again, with Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown and Jason Campbell, too many good players on that Auburn offense. They're going to come alive at some point and get some things going to move the football. You've got to take advantage of these opportunities and this field position and get the biggest lead you can 
for this football game. Darby the deep back. That's McLean in motion. Here's Darby. This is the second run. Nothing there. Third and goal from the five. Mike Chula trying to find the key to the puzzle. What works? Tommy Tuberville said, what do we do defensively here? Well, again, we talked about the Alabama defense. I mean, this Auburn defense is number five in the country in total defense. Only given up 266 yards, number one in the country in scoring defense. They've only given up 93 points coming into today. Now it's 96. Outstanding season. Third and goal. Davidson and McLean to the right. Pro throw will split wide right. They will run it for a third straight time, and they will gain nothing for a third straight time. The field goal unit will come on. I understand what Mike Shula is thinking. You know, we, we got to get points. Sure, we'd love a touchdown, but we've got to get points. We've got to give our defense some hope. Last week against LSU, the hope went out of the team, and the defense kind of collapsed in the fourth quarter. They're playing inspired right now. You've got to give them something to hang on to. You wanted seven, but just settle for three. 22-yard effort for the senior Brian Bostic from the left hash mark. Snap is good. The kick is up. Alabama leads by six. They got something. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. CBS. 6 nothing. Field goals of 42 and 22 yards for the senior Brian Bostic. As Alabama tries to put a stop to what has been a superb Auburn season. And field position, Todd. Well, that's Alabama's game. And uh, unfortunately, though, for them, they've had that. And they've had the ball three times in Auburn territory, but they only have six points. Yes, they have the lead, but a touchdown and an extra point puts them behind by one. Here comes Jamie Christensen. Kick will be taken by Carnell Williams. It's a short one. He begins his journey at the 10-yard line. Out to the 27, perhaps the 28 for the first down and 10. Marcus Carter with the stop. And the interception by Jason Campbell. Well, Alabama got a big break. The tip by Cooper Wallace. Madison gets him right back into the, the red zone inside the 10. And then three running plays. And what Alabama felt like they had to do was they had to win inside against the tackles. They had to get a push inside. Three off-tackle plays netted them nothing. And credit the defensive tackles, T.J. Jackson and Jay Ratliff, number 83, in there to make those plays to stuff Alabama down inside the five-yard line. Now Terrence Jones is on as a linebacker, number 55, for the Crimson Tide. On first down, play fake, Campbell. Looks deep. Can't find anybody open. And he wanted a runner to do. And Campbell forced to run. He's out to the 32-yard line. Tackle made by Charlie Pepra. Let's go back to the studio for this Pontiac game-changing performance. Here's Tim. Vern, I've got a Louisiana Mosquito ready to take out Todd Blackledge's uh, Nat. That would be Boise State. Matt Kubik to Ryan Motes. He's the best running back you know the least about. 18 yards for the touchdown. Boise's 20-game win streak on the line, and their status is a fly in the ointment. Ah, there he is. Tim must think they're going to call that game at halftime. You know, they're in the second quarter. <laughs> the Nats got a lot of life yet. Quarterback comparison thus far. Second down. Here's play fake again. Campbell wants a run with Shadu Bate. Settles for Ronnie Brown out of the backfield, but a beautiful open field tackle by Charlie Pepper, number 26. Freddie Roach a little slow getting up at the end of that one. Now, these linebackers for Alabama really the strength of this defense. All three of them, or in some cases four, can really run. And they cover a lot of field, both in the running and the passing game. Another big third down play. I don't think Auburn's converted yet, have they? Not yet. Third down? 0 for 3. Uh, 
option play. Campbell. They're all, well, he's going to be close. Yeah, second effort yeah. might have gotten yeah. him. We saw one option play last week against Georgia down on the goal line. Al Board just told us that they might run some more option because of Alabama's pressure defense. That's one way to offset a team that brings pressure is to run the option because it forces them to kind of get a little more vanilla. They're going to run the option down the line, and Campbell's going to keep it and then stretch the ball out at the very end to try to get that first down. Haven't brought the chain out yet. Here it comes. 6 nothing Alabama. Outstanding field possession. A great defensive effort by the Crimson Tide thus far. And this will be... Auburn first down. Well, Mike Shula in his second year as the head coach at Alabama, it is time now for the... Airplane. It's a wet duck today. Trivia question of the week. Of Alabama's three previous coaches, Mike DeBose, Dennis Franchoni, or Mike Price, who has the most wins this season? I think there might be a hook here. It's a good one. It is a good one. Proud of our crack research staff for coming up with this. First down and 10. Campbell with a play fake again. Goes across, to, has a fumble. Yep, that's the completion. Guy. Roman Harper has the ball. Cooper Wallace again. He bobbled one and it got intercepted. This time he caught it and coughed it up for the fumble. My, oh my. And the longer Alabama stays in it. And turnovers and field position. The game is playing right into Alabama's hands right now. Here's Wallace. He's going to run the crossing route. It's a good throw by Campbell. He's got an easy first down. And D'Amico Ryans from behind strips the ball out. Watch D'Amico Ryans. Again, one of those outstanding linebackers. Punches the ball out from behind. Madison comes up with it. Alabama, good field position again. First down and 10. LeRon McLean. This is going to be Johns in the backfield. It's Pennington trying to... He's being chased by Eddins, and Spencer Pennington takes it out of bounds up near the 47-yard line. Good decision by Spencer. You know, he, he didn't have anything. It was a quick throw, a quick setup. Get what you can get and get out of bounds. Sometimes the defense wins, particularly a good defense like this Auburn Tiger team. Has a moment to chat with his head coach, Mike Shula. Well... Second turnover forced by Alabama. They got uh, a field goal out of it. <laughs> Toss sweep. Aaron Johns slips the first tackle. And he is bounced down by Jay Ratliff. Good effort. He crosses midfield. And the first time we've seen Alabama try to get the ball outside, and the way they did it was they got formation out there, they got extra blockers, and they went on a quick count. As soon as they got set, they went on the quick count. They caught Auburn's defense a little bit off guard. And then some good running by Aaron Johns breaking some tackles. McLean and Prothrow out there blocking on the edge. And the first time we've seen Alabama try to get to the corner against this fast defense. Third and three. And Spencer Pennington not all that effective as a thrower. They'll use a timeout. That's their second. Leaves them with one. 5.55 to go first half. Crimson died by six. Five fifty-five to go first half Alabama facing a third and three what do you like here well what Alabama likes to do here is they like to flip it out in the flat to LaRon McClain the fullback I think they've got to maybe try to get something deep down the field but they got the wishbone again here's Bertrand nothing, nothing doing nothing doing again uh, they lined up in this wishbone again Here's pro throw. They went on a quicker count, but this time Auburn quite ready for it on the third and short play. And Ratliff, again, from his tackle position, he's having a monster game so far from his inside tackle position. Played defensive end last year, moved inside this year, and is having a wonderful senior season. 
230 yard, uh, yards on punt returns, more than 64 Division I schools this year. Here's Freeland. But his high punts have uh, negated the effectiveness of Car Carnell Williams at that position today. That's a 26-yard punt, but no return. And Auburn will start inside their own 20-yard line again. The field position edge very much in Alabama's favor here in the first half. It is true some seats are better than others, and then there's standing room only. 13th time an undefeated and untied team has come into this game, and that undefeated and untied team has won 10 of the previous 12. Alabama lost both, both teams undefeated and untied in 1971. First down, Tigers trailing by six. They are the undefeated team. Here's Campbell for Obamani. Has him, yes, indeed, right in front of Anthony Madison. Now the Auburn Tigers trying to obtain their first national championship since 1957. The current BCS standings. They find themselves number three behind USC and Oklahoma, California fourth, Texas and Utah. Definitely gained ground on Oklahoma after their win against Georgia. Oklahoma with a big win today against Baylor already gone for the afternoon. Here's the draw play to Cornell Williams. And he's out to the 37-yard line. Well, how has this Alabama defense done today? Well, so far, it's been outstanding. They've been very disciplined. You see how they stay right in their gaps. And they're not blitzing a lot, but they're just staying disciplined, staying in their lanes, and breaking down and trying to run to the football and make game tackles on these two dangerous backs. And then when they've been in passing situations, they've been able to get some pressure on Jason Campbell without blitzing. Their front four has done a nice job. Auburn yet to cross midfield. Here's Campbell. This might be the first time. Courtney Taylor has a first down at the Alabama 42-yard line. Joe Kynes told us yesterday, the defensive coordinator, you really just can't blitz randomly against these guys. You've got to be pick your spots to blitz. Well, he picked a spot to bring a corner blitz. Ramsey Robinson is going to come on the corner blitz, but Jason Campbell is going to see it and get the ball right now to Courtney Taylor. He sees the blitz. He comes out of his fake. He makes the throw, and Auburn in business on the other side of the 50-yard line. Longest gain of the game for Auburn, 21 yards. They'll keep it on the ground. Here's Cadillac Williams. Nothing doing. Jawan Garth with the tackle then. Now, how about Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown? They've been held in check today. Yeah, very much so. Last week against Georgia, they combined for 366 total yards of offense, doing a little bit of everything. Alabama's defense playing very disciplined right now, but a nice drive underway with Jason Campbell right now. Second down, 11. Two tight end offense for Auburn. That balances out this Alabama defense a little bit. Williams skips through inside the 35 down near the 33 yard line. Charlie Pepper number 26 with the tackle. Auburn three punts an interception and a fumble and this is the first time that they've gotten across midfield. And again I, I reiterate the point about Alabama only having six points. You, you knew this Auburn offense has too many weapons too many seasoned veteran players but they're not going to stay down too long. As soon as they hit a couple plays and get some decent field position, they're going to try to put some pressure on you. That's what they're doing right here. It's Jake Slaughter at fullback. Here's the change by Campbell. This could be an option again on third and short. We saw it the last time. Cooper Wallace, a tight end to the left. They give it to Williams. He bounces it outside, still on his feet. What balance. Yes, indeed. First down, Auburn. Great balance by Carnell. Last year in this Iron Bowl, Carnell went 80 yards on the first play of the game, and he finished with a career-high 204 yards. This, one of his better runs today. He bounces outside, he breaks the tackle of Anthony Madison, and then just shows tremendous balance and determination to get that first down and more. Matter of fact, this is his first game at Bryant-Denny. Mm -hmm. He played last year at Jordan-Hare. He missed the first trip over here because of an injury. 2002. Here's the toss to Ronnie Brown, who's out there. 
Oh, boy. They can counter with the Ronnie Brown while giving Carnell Williams a rest and then come back with both men in the backfield. Well, they outflanked them this time. They got some extra blockers out there. They went to the toss sweep. Nice job by Marcus McNeil, the big left tackle, getting out and leading on that play. Got the corner secured for Ronnie Brown. Second and one at the 15, eighth play of the drive. Slaughter to the fullback. Draw play. Brown, first and goal at the eight-yard line, perhaps the nine. That's what they'll spot it. Roman Harper made the tackle. And the biggest thing that happened is Jason Campbell hit a couple pass plays early in this drive to change the field position, to get them away from their end of the field, to open up their offense a little bit, and now the running game starting to kick in for the Auburn Tigers. They have one timeout remaining, and we're nearing the one-minute mark. Campbell back being chased. Goes left, incomplete for Cadillac Williams. The pursuit came from Jeremy Clark, number 99. Well, this was pretty well defended also by Alabama. They kind of guessed this. Jeremy Clark is going to get the pressure on the inside. He's going to get the pressure on Campbell. And they're going to try to run a throwback screen. And Jawan Garth, watch him, number 42, read the screen. He sees it. He's getting in position to make the play. And it was a high throw by Jason Campbell anyway. But Alabama was in pretty good position to stop that play. Second down and nine, four wide receivers. Brown, nope. Third down. See if they use their timeout. 45 seconds to go. Yeah, they want the timeout. I think they want to call the timeout because they want to make sure they get the right play to go for a touchdown here. Tigers use their final timeout. They trail by six. They've got a third and goal when we come back. Yet another sellout crowd at Bryant-Denny Stadium, Alabama. Outstanding defensive effort. They've gotten two field goals to take a 6-0 lead, but this, the first long Auburn drive. And this, I think, is the most critical play in the first half because emotions and momentum huge in this game every year. If Alabama gets a stop here and forces the field goal, they'll go into halftime with momentum. If Auburn scores and kicks the extra point, they'll have the momentum. Campbell, four-man rush by the Crimson Tide. He comes across the middle. Alabama has stopped Auburn and forced the field goal. And they can't stop the clock, so right. they've got to run their field goal team on and execute it. They have plenty of time to do this. Every team practices running your field goal team on, and really you need about 16 seconds, and they had over 25. So no sense of duress right now for Auburn. Chaz Crowfoot will snap it. Sam Reeves will hold it. John Vaughn will kick it. Oh, Doink! Doink is right! Doink! Extra momentum for the Alabama Crimson Tide. The first time Auburn came to Tuscaloosa was 1895. They came again in the early 1900s. They came back in 2000. They're playing here for the fifth time. This is the first time that Alabama has ever led Auburn in Tuscaloosa at the half. Doink indeed. Here's Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. Coach, an unusually slow start for your team. What's the problem out there? Well, we just don't have any rhythm. They're playing hard defensively. We can't get it. We can't get any rhythm offensively. We started getting it there in the uh, series before that, and then we fumbled the ball, and we drove it the length of the field in, missed the field goal. We'll be fine. Proud defensively, they've kept us in the game. They got a good football team. We can't take anything away from that. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Vern, back to you. All right, Tracy, thank you. John Vaughn hits the upright. 
He also missed an extra point earlier, then came back to make one. He might be significant. Here's Tim. Auburn Tigers come in having won 12 in a row. They trail by six as we get set for the start of the third quarter. The last time Tommy Tuberville's team was held scoreless in the first half was their last loss at Georgia, November 15th, a year ago. Jamie Christensen kicks off. Carnell Williams, Devin Aroma should do are deep. This one will go through the end zone. Touchback. And a moment ago, Tracy Wolfson chatted with Mike Shula. Coach, you've had good field position all game, but you've only put up six points against this Auburn team. How important is it to get into the end zone? Yeah, we got to get it in there. You know, we've let them off the hook. Our defense is playing great. And, you know, you got to get touchdowns. And um, I think the biggest thing right now is, you know, we got to play better up front in the offensive line. You know, we had the one turnover down there, but. Uh, you know, we got to continue to play good defense, uh, run the ball better than we have, and then, uh, you know, just see what happens. Thanks a lot. Good luck. On first down, Jason Campbell will throw, and he's going to throw deep. Nope, he can't because of the downfield coverage. Campbell is sacked after a gain of one. Well, I really think that a key for both teams in this first half, second half, is going to be to throw on early downs. They go play action. And there's just nobody open. You see all three receivers are covered. The backs are covered out of the backfield. Excellent discipline defense by Alabama on the first play of the second half. Second down and 10. Campbell did regain the line of scrimmage. Looks deep again. Goes right side. That one. Wow. Ramsey okay. Robinson was there, but the catch is made by Courtney Taylor. And it was a good one. I think that you like what you've seen on the first two plays here. Well, I think that's what both teams have to do. I mean, these two teams combined for 128 yards of offense in the first half. Neither team was able to run the ball successfully, despite the fact that you've got great running backs. So I think both teams in the second half have to throw the ball on early downs to set up their run. And we've seen from Auburn already the first two plays, they've thrown the football. Got 11 on the last play. It's first and 10. Hand off. Carnell Williams comes left. Anthony Madison, a good job of forcing him back inside where Cornelius Wortham makes the tackle, number 16. First half statistics presented by the Hartford. And take a look at the rushing yards. Alabama, 22 yards rushing. Coming into the game, the number one rushing team in the conference, averaging over 200 yards a game. Auburn only 51 yards. So both teams played great run defense in that first half. And I think you have to throw to loosen the defenses up and open up some creases for the running game. Second down and two, a gain of eight by Williams on the last play. Jake Slaughter tries to provide the block. He does. Carnell Williams shifts to the right and moves out to the 45-yard line. Well, Auburn in the first half had to punt three times, then had an interception, a fumble, and a missed field goal. Yeah, but look at that. Their last two possessions, that's 104 yards. They only had 112 in the whole first half, so they started to get some things going, their last two offensive possessions, and they've got the ball moving again here on their first possession of the second half. They've uh, shoved it out 24 yards thus far. Play fake. Campbell looks deep left for a Roma Shadu. Goes deep left for a Roma Shadu. It's caught. He's got a first down at the five-yard line. 50 yards. He outfought Anthony Madison. And another first down throw. Again, Al Borges. I think we're seeing the same thing that I was seeing. This Alabama defense difficult to run on. We've got to try to loosen them up. We've got to throw the football on early downs. They're good on third down defense. Let's throw on first. Big receiver against a smaller defensive back. He went up and fought for the football. And Auburn down deep in Alabama territory. Backs in the eye. Cadillac Williams behind Jake Slaughter. They give it to Cadillac. He comes left. He'll walk in. Touchdown. Touchdown. 
and he takes out a photographer on the sideline. Well, a little fairly late hit at the end of that play by Roman Harper. That's what knocked Carnell Williams into the cameraman. And a little frustration on the Alabama defense. They got stung this first possession thanks to a couple big pass plays from Jason Campbell. John Vaughn to try the go-ahead extra point. Missed the field goal, hit the left upright at the end of the first half from 22 yards out. This one, perfect. And just like that, the Auburn Tigers go 80 yards. Carnell Williams with his eighth consecutive game rushing for a touchdown. That was quick. It's 7-6. Seven six Auburn. They go 80 yards. They get the touchdown from Carnell Cadillac Williams, his 44th career rushing record. It is an Auburn record, and you know, I think, who held it before? <laughs> A guy named Bo. And Auburn leads it by one. Philip Yost will kick off. Well, now the big question is: Will Mike Shula do the same thing with Spencer Pennington? Come out throwing to start the second half. Pro throw, five yards back, will take a knee. Let's go back and take a look at Jason Campbell. And uh, he's a senior. He's playing his best football in his career. And they came out to start this second half and said, hey, 17, make some plays. Second down play, a beautiful throw on the sideline to Courtney Taylor. First down play action, deep down the field to Aroma Shadu. Got him in the scoring territory, and then they scored on the run by Carnell Williams the next play. But it was coming out with an aggressive, throwing mentality that got them that first score. Pennington will hand it off to Darby, and the yards are tough against this Auburn defense on the ground. Now time now for the Argent quarterback, mortgage quarterback comparison. Pat Sullivan, yeah. Heisman Trophy in 71. How does he stack up against Jason Campbell? Well... How does Jason Campbell stack up against a Heisman Trophy winner? I'd say pretty good. I mean, he's got a better record. Didn't throw for as many yards, not as many touchdowns, but far fewer interceptions, even though he did throw one in the first half of this ballgame. But he has had a superb senior season, and he plays with great poise and composure, and he showed it there on that last drive. Shotgun now. Pennington in the backfield. That's LeBron McClain in motion. Snap a little high, and Pennington bobbles it. Comes near side. That's a shot put. And that was not a pretty pass. No, it wasn't. And see, this is not what I meant by throwing. I think the key to throwing against these defenses is throwing on early downs and using play action where you have a lot of maximum protection. When you get into the shotgun and spread out your receivers like you have to do in this third down situation, then that allows a defense to really tee off and come after you. And this Auburn defense leads the SEC with 35 sacks. So th this is plays into their hands defensively as opposed to throwing on first down. Here's Pennington back. Here comes Carlos Rogers on the blitz. Pennington down. It was Rogers who hit him first. And then it was Karibi Dede who got there second. The All-American cornerback and the backup linebacker collaborate with McClubber giving pressure inside. Well, LaRon McLean is banged up. Josh Smith is the backup fullback. He's in there trying to protect. He got spun around. Carlos Rogers came free. And Spencer Pennington nowhere to go on third down. That brings on Bo Freeland to punt and Cornell Williams waiting at the 37-38 yard line. Look how they double the outside guys. They really try to free up Cornell Williams on the punt returns. They try to give him as much space as possible. He'll have a chance to return this one. But not very far. Freeland with a 52-yard effort on a six-yard return for Carnell Williams. But unlike the first half, after an Alabama punt, Auburn starts outside of their 30-yard line. So good field position on their second offensive possession of the second half. Looks like there is a flag down back at the 20-yard line across the way. 
A penalty being assessed to, to Auburn. Now Steve Landis all the way back at the 20-yard line. And here it is. During the kick, holding by number nine of the receiving team, foul happened less than three yards from the line of scrimmage. Therefore, it is enforced from the line of scrimmage. Wow. Ten-yard penalty. First for down for Alabama. A holding penalty on Anthony Mix, a wide receiver, and new life for the Alabama offense. A very costly penalty on the Auburn special teams. Take a look at the right side and see if we can spot it. Here's Anthony Mix right there, number nine. He's got a hold of the jersey of the linebacker, Terrence Jones. And a huge break for Alabama's offense. A flag is down, thrown by Steve Landis before the snap. This would appear to be a substitution penalty on Alabama. Illegal substitution on the offense. They came on the field with 12 men and one ran off. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And you just can't have that. Again, the, the margin of error for Alabama offensively is so very small. They cannot afford to, to lose opportunities. You get the... The big break on the penalty, and now you start first and 15 against this aggressive Tiger defense. One running back. There's motion again on Alabama. And uh, this one might be declined unless it was a dead ball foul. Let's see if the motion came before the, before the snap. Well, I think Alabama needs to gather themselves here because clearly they had the momentum going into the locker room, but it's been all Auburn since they've come out of the locker room. Back-to-back -back penalties now on Alabama, and it backs them up even further. And a double here. You've got holding and motion next Friday. Dell presents college football's 10 greatest coaches. That's going to be Friday at 1.30. Interesting list. Could Bryant be a part of it? Probably so. LSU at Arkansas next Friday, 2.30 Eastern time. Our Home Depot coverage of the SEC on CBS. So that's Friday's holiday programming the day after Thanksgiving. Now let's see if uh, Steve Landis can straighten us out. In that game on Friday, two of the better players that the SEC has seen in the last several years will wrap up their collegiate careers. Matt Jones, the quarterback at Arkansas. Marcus Spears, the defensive end of LSU. Second down and 18. They keep it on the ground and don't get much. Kenneth Darby runs into Junior Rosegreen, number four. See, what Auburn does, and again, they know what Alabama's defense can and can't do. So they know they're going to run, so they're going to bring Junior Rosegreens in here late, number four. He's a safety. You don't see him right now, but he's going to come in here late. There he is, and he's unblocked. Now the key is he has to make the tackle. If the running back can make him miss, then Alabama can have a good play. But Junior Rosegreen, he doesn't miss too many tackles. And this Auburn defense has given up only three of 39 first downs on 3 and 11 or more, here's a long pass. Keith Brown, it's fourth down. Well, that is a huge defensive stand for Auburn. They give up the penalty. They come right back on the field. They send them backwards, and then they make them punt again three plays later. So Bo Freeland on for the fourth punt of the game. Carnell Williams at the 33-yard line. You cannot be one-dimensional and, and have success against a good defense. And you can get by being one-dimensional against a bad defense, but not a good defense. And Auburn is a good defense. This one not as effective for Freeland. Williams moves up. Good downfield coverage. My goodness. Ezekiel Knight. 34-yard punt. Nothing on the return. But Auburn has the ball and a one-point lead.
quarter. Auburn leads it 7-6. to six. Sunday, what do you get when Jim Carrey goes on 60 minutes? A side of him that's rarely on display. That's Sunday on 60 minutes. Now, one of the few times here in the second half, they've got Brown and Williams in the backfield. And they got their best starting field position of the game on the 42-yard line. They actually gained nine yards after that penalty on Anthony Mix. And it's a play fake. Campbell wants to go deep. Camp, good coverage, settles for the short man, Silas Daniels. And Daniels is out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Now, this week's Scholar Athlete presented by Red Lobster. D'Amico Ryans, a junior for the Crimson Tide with a 3.5 grade point average in management. He took 44 hours over two semesters and two summers. Is that? Yes, that's right. And uh, is on course to graduate next August. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown by donating $1,000 to Alabama's General Scholarship Fund. Williams to the 50, perhaps a foot beyond. And uh, let's go back and check in once again with Tim Brando. Tim? Vern, well, your partner Todd was right. There was a little time left to be played there on the blue field for the battle in Broncos. And the fly in the ointment uh, looking for John Hellman Dollar for a payday. 27-14. Watch out, though. Still a Louisiana school ready to make a difference. <laughs> Well, the one thing, the reason that game is significant for us is uh, that a Louisiana Tech loss could hurt Auburn because that was one of Auburn's non-conference opponents earlier in the season. Third and two. Option play, Campbell spins, has the first down at the 46. Second time we've seen Campbell run the option on third down and short. Well, there is some uh, question about the strength of schedule in the BCS standings. Take a look on the left. USC played Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, Brigham Young, and Colorado State. Oklahoma, Oregon, Bowling Green, and Houston. And Auburn, La Tech, La Monroe, and the Citadel. Yeah, and I'm writing up there the one loss record of those non-conference opponents. The only one with a losing combined record is Auburn's opponents. Here's Campbell. Flips it out. Caught by his tight end. Cooper Wallace makes the catch and moves to the 40-yard line. That's a gain of seven. And a completely different looking Auburn offense here in the third quarter. I mean, they're coming out throwing first to set up the run. And the non-conference opponents. Here is uh, USC at number one. The strength of schedule 36th. Oklahoma's 14th. And Auburn... 21st. That's according to the NCAA. I must say, a playoff would be simpler. Here's Cadillac Williams. Well, again, we see the fine balance of Cadillac Williams as they kept stringing him out and stringing him out. It looked like he'd go down. But he puts that right hand on the ground and is able to fall forward for three or four more yards and another Auburn first down. And they have thrown on first down in this half. Tommy Tuberville said we didn't get any rhythm offensively until that last drive. Well, they've got some rhythm going thanks to the early passing of Jason Campbell. Again, play fake, left side, a run to do, open, caught. They tried another corner blitz, and Jason Campbell read it. This time they tried to come from his backside, and he still saw it. Simeon Castillo came on the blitz. That's why Jason Campbell went to a Roma should do. Actually got both feet down in, only needed one. That's Roman Hart for a safety coming over for coverage. But Jason Campbell read the blitz. See, the Campbell's been perfect five of five in this half. Here's the tight end, Wallace, going to the right side. Here's a toss sweep. Slaughter, great block. But a good defensive pursuit. And the tackle made by Juwan Garth. How important is balance in your offense? We're seeing it with Auburn, and we see a lack of it in Alabama, and that's been their problem all season. As good as they can run the football, if the threat of a pass is not legitimate, anybody can stop you. 
And Auburn right now is showing their balance. All Alabama has said defensively, okay, we're not going to let 23 and 24 beat us. We are going to zero in on those guys. So Al Borges now says, okay, 17, it's your turn to, to make things happen. And Jason Campbell is responding. Ronnie Brown at fullback here. Uh, flag is thrown on the near side. For the snap, ball start number eight on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, Cooper Wallace with the movement. That'll make it second down and 17. Wallace not having a game for the ages. No. Had a tip that led to an interception. Had a fumble after a reception. Campbell. Too high. Intended for Williams. That was a big penalty for Alabama because they were having trouble stopping this Auburn offense. The penalty set them back, and now it's third and very long for Jason Campbell. This has not been a good Alabama team in the second half. As you take a look at the four games they've lost this year, they have scored combined only three points. They were shut out 20 to nothing last week against LSU in the second half. So they've not been very strong in the second half when it comes to points. And they're behind in this one. Third and 17. Little half roll. Campbell sets up, has plenty of time. He's got Courtney Taylor. Touchdown, Auburn. On third and 17, he finds Taylor for 32. Well, they got the safety in a bind. They had two receivers going down the field, and Jason Campbell had enough time to let both of his receivers stretch the field. Mm, mm, mm. John Vaughn for the extra point. Got it. Just as it was all Alabama in the first 30 minutes, it's been all Auburn in the third quarter. And Jason Campbell has led the way. Third and 17 leads to six. The Tigers are trying to remain undefeated. Fourteen six Auburn, five fifty to go, third quarter. As this uh, predominantly Alabama crowd has uh, become quite quiet, Jason Campbell on third and seventeen finds Courtney Taylor, and Mike Shula is trying to find an offensive answer. Yost, Philip Yost, pro throw at the two. He darts to his left, tries to spin out of a tackle. There's a flag that's thrown from 15 yards away. While we wait for the call, let's uh, go back to the touchdown. Well, the guy you got to watch right here is Charlie Pepra because what happens is Auburn's going to send two receivers deep, and Jason Campbell is going to put that safety in a bind. Now, Auburn did a nice job of rolling the quarterback out. That bought him a little extra time, and he saw that safety lock on the inside receiver, and that left Courtney Taylor outside. It's not the corner's fault because the corner turned him over. And the safety not able to get over because he was occupied by the inside receiver. Here's an interesting little nugget about Auburn. Third down and 11 plus. Their offense has converted 42% coming into the day. That's an unusually high number on third and long yardage. There was a holding call on the kickoff return. Here's Pennington bringing it out to the left side. Catch is made by Keith Brown on first down and 10. Now let's take a look now at the Home Depot coaches decision. November 6th, Mississippi State, one of the 18 seniors 
Anthony Carter came on the field for the first time in three years. Quite an emotional moment for Carter. He had a terrific start to his collegiate career, his freshman and sophomore years in uh, 1999 and 2000 injuries. And this was Anthony before the game leading the crowd as he makes his final appearance here at Brian Denny. Just about everybody that we talk to, players and coaches alike, when you mention his name, a smile comes on their face, and they just say he's been a great leader, uh, a guy who comes to work every day even though he can't play and, and puts his time in. He's been a great encouragement. They, they've got a lot of young receivers on this Alabama team, and he's been like a big brother to those guys. And an Alabama player down. It looks like it's LaRon McClain again. Again, he hurt his right ankle in the game last week against LSU and that looks like what they're looking at again. Man, the Auburn team uh, as they did a week ago when Reggie Brown of Georgia went down comes out and kneels uh, in a silent prayer. Here's McLean blocking on Derrick Graves and the Aaron Johns coming. Travis Williams is going to fall on the back of his leg right there. to his feet will be assisted from the field and time has been called it's 14 to 6 Auburn fullback LeBron McLean uh, assisted to the Crimson Tide bench getting some medical attention now Kenneth Darby uh, has rejoined the huddle and he is in the backfield and you got to believe he's going to get the ball in this third down and one. The only problem, he doesn't have his normal fullback in there to lead block for him. It's Josh Smith, a senior who has been primarily a special teams player until today. And off goes to Darby. Uh, he scored it in there and got it. I think he did, yes. Now he has a real knack for just falling forward and gaining positive yards. Now, last week against LSU, this guy took a beating. He carried it 35 times for 109 very tough yards. I mean, he earned every one of those yards last week. And you can see he's not 100%. He does not feel very good for whatever. I mean, he's got a, a couple different things, I think, going on with him today. Aaron Johns back in the game. He got that tough yard on third down, and now Johns back in. Alabama trailing by eight, 14-6. Here's Pennington on first down. Goes deep left side. Keith Come Brown, in. he's there, just missed him by a yard. He was open. They went after Montavious Pitts. And Keith Brown had him by a couple steps. And this is a pretty good throw by Pennington. I mean, over the outside shoulder. And when you're struggling offensively, I mean, that's one that, that you've got to make that play. I mean, Keith Brown is a talented youngster, a freshman out of Gulfport, Mississippi. Great speed. But you gotta you gotta make a little better effort to make that play there because your team needs something good to happen. See what's happened offensively to Alabama in the second and third quarters. It's second and ten here. Davidson, the tight end, goes in motion. Here's Pennington with a play back from behind. Throws it over the middle. It's caught by Johns. He slips a tackle, and he's got a first down after being forced out of bounds in the Auburn bench area. And really a nice job by Spencer Pennington eluding the sack of Stanley McGlover because McGlover was bearing down on him from the backside and Pennington felt it and stepped up into the pocket and dumped it off to Johns. Well, nice heads up play in the pocket by Spencer Pennington feeling the rush and dumping it off to the tailback. That's a gain of 19 and a first down. Again, I think you got to go play action and try to throw the thing down the field. Now they've got one back in, and it's it's Josh Smith, the fullback. Here's the toss to Josh Smith, and he gets out near the 48-yard line on his fourth carry of the season. Well, we've seen this before from Alabama. We saw it in the Tennessee game. I mean, it's going to come down to if Alabama is to have a chance to win this game, it's going to have to be Spencer Pennington. He's going to have to throw the football for them to win the game. Kenneth Darby is not 100%. He's not there. LaRon McClain, the fullback, is not in the game. You've got a couple third-teamers in your backfield right now. It's on the quarterback's shoulders. Second down and five. They'll keep it on the ground, test the uh, center. 
And uh, Aaron Johns, number 28. And I, I should add also, not only on Spencer Pennington, but it's on this veteran offensive line. The strength of this Alabama team all season has been the offensive line. Led by Wesley Britt and Evan Mathis on the left side. J.P. Klausner, the center. Danny March, a senior right guard. This has been the glue of this football team so far this year. They've got to, they've got to find a way to block for these backup running backs and to protect their quarterback. Third and one. Johns is the deep back. He gets the handoff. Tries to hurdle for the first down. And while the uh, get the spot and check for the first down, let's check in with Tracy. Thanks, Vern. A few injury updates on the Alabama sideline. Kenneth Darby, we've seen him going in and out. He's been holding, it looks as though his stomach or his groin. I, won't, I don't have any other information on that. I will bring it to you if I get it. As far as fullback Leron McLean goes, he has re-injured that right ankle. They have taped him heavily. They say he will go back in. And Kenneth Darby is back on the field on fourth and one. They asked Leron McLean. Is there any way you won't play in this game? He said, only if I injure my other ankle. So I guess the fact that he re-injured the same one, that's why he's going to try to go. Iron Bowl, Auburn undefeated, leading by eight. Fourth and one. Two minutes to go, third quarter. Darby darts right. Close, I don't very know. Very close. Very, very close. He didn't need much, but he sure didn't get much. They tried to run right. A nice run blitz by Derek Graves, number 19, and Junior Rose Green and Travis Williams there to stop him. Wow, what a stop. They don't bring the chain out. Eyeball it. The key was to get some push inside. They collapsed inside, and Darby had to bounce it out. That play wasn't designed to bounce outside the tackle. It was forced outside by Auburn's penetration. So the Tigers take over on their own 48-yard line. Look at the amazing difference in field position from one half to the other. Here's first down. Fake the option. Go back to throw. And he's got Silas. It's Taylor again. Nice Courtney call. Taylor. Nice call. Your defense just gets a big stop. You come back and you go for the big play with your senior quarterback. Jason T Campbell has run the option twice. This time they fake the option. You see all the Alabama defenders run with the option, and then you throw it out the backside, and you beat the linebacker, Jawan Garth. Fake the option, come off the line, and make the throw downfield on the crossing route. Great call by Al Borges. I'm thinking of our conversations over the year with Al Borges. It's not only what you call, it's when you call. Absolutely. Taylor with five catches, including a touchdown. He's gone over 100 yards now. That one was good for 24. Ronnie Brown, right side. Mark Anderson, a good job up on top. And we'll catch our breath and go back to Tim Brando and get an update. Tim? Vernon Todd, I may have some good news for Michigan as they hope to back into Pasadena, Iowa. This is Drew Tate again to Clinton Solomon for 51 yards. Second time those two have hooked up. And the Hawkeyes have the touchdown lead as they go to the break. I don't know if it'd be good news for Vern and I, but definitely good news for Tracy, <laughs> a Michigan grad. She'd be happy if Michigan could back in anyway, get into the Rose Bowl. Uh, congratulations to Penn State for their win today. Yeah, good win for Coach Paterno. Your alma mater. Here's Campbell. Left side. And a fine defensive play. Now, we talked about these running backs. Uh, they all have been more or less held in check. Yeah, they have. I mean, obviously, coming in, they were the focus of their respective offenses. And the defenses have really zeroed in on them and said, if someone's going to beat us, it's not going to be these three guys. So that means Jason Campbell and Courtney Taylor and Spencer Pennington. And so far, in the third quarter anyway, Auburn has certainly had the best of it. Now they came out of the halftime break and they uh, went 80 yards. The big play was a 50 yard pass to Aroma Shadu. The extra point gave him a seven to six lead. They tacked another one on and that is the end of three with Auburn leading 14 to six. 
We'll return to Bryant-Denny Stadium right after these messages. And this word from your local station. We welcome you back to Bryant-Denny Stadium on the campus of the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, the Iron Bowl for the 69th time. Auburn undefeated, leading by eight. They're looking at a third and eight. And a huge play right here, because you got to remember, a stop here, no gimme field goal. It's still a one-score game right here. Auburn dominated the third quarter, but Alabama can stop the bleeding right here with a big stop. They stack the receivers to the left side. Three in a row. Here comes the blitz from the corner, Madison. Campbell caught. Oba Manu at the 15-yard line. That is a first down. How about Jason Campbell? Nine of ten now in the second half, and he has put this team on his shoulders. Alabama's going to come with pressure, and there Taylor's going to slip out to the corner here. They're going to use that little stack formation to run the crossing routes. Taylor comes out of there, and Campbell hits him under duress for a huge third down conversion. Or Obamana, excuse me. First down, here's Ronnie Brown going left, spilled after a gain of two. Well, I'm thinking about Jason Campbell and the, the emergence of him as a, a fifth-year senior. They've had the two running backs, yeah. but he really, truly has taken this team on his shoulders. He really has. This second half, he's been marvelous. I mean, they came out and they said, look, we can't run. Eventually, if we if we get some plays, we'll be able to go back to Ronnie and Carnell, but you've got to get it done, Jason, and he's done it. Nine of ten in the second half, and that last one, a huge third down conversion in the Alabama red zone. Call this one second and eight, just inside the 15. Jake Slaughter back in at fullback. Two wide outs and a tight end. Four-man rush. Keep it on the ground. Give it off to Ronnie Brown, number 23, and look at him fight. You know, every quarterback, I think, has a defining game or a defining moment. And for Jason Campbell this year, it was back in September against LSU. Fourth down and 12. Team trailing 9-3. to three. He hits Courtney Taylor for 14 yards. And then three plays later, he throws this touchdown pass to the same guy, Courtney Taylor. They get the extra point and beat LSU 10-9. to nine. At that time, LSU, the defending national champions. And that really turned the corner for Jason Campbell this season. Third down and one. Ronnie Brown again looks as if he has the first down. The spot will be just at the six-yard line. This might call for a measurement. And for the first time tonight, it appears that the Alabama defense is showing some signs of fatigue. Again, now both of these teams had big games last week. But Auburn had a much easier time of it in their game against Georgia at home. Alabama was on the road. They played at night in Baton Rouge. Then they had to travel back to Tuscaloosa. And it was a very physical game. Got some more guys banged up. And, and, and right now, this is the first time that the Alabama defense has looked a little bit worn out to me. Fourth down. Alabama, of course. Uh, let's see now what... Uh, Tommy Tuberville decides to do. Well, I think Tommy feels like he's got this team on the ropes right now. And, and he knows that his defense is the nation's stingiest defense. They've only given up you know, a small number of points, 9.3 points per game. And he just doesn't think this Alabama offense can close the gap. If he can get another score in here and go up by two touchdowns, I think he's thinking it's lights out. Fourth and inches. On the road, undefeated in the Iron Bowl. Trying to put it out of reach. They will go for the first down or the touchdown. Quarterback keeper, they go for the first down and they got it. Got it. You know, I think about this uh, Auburn team that we've seen throughout the season. They not only defeated LSU, in a, a pivotal game back in September, then went on the road and won at Tennessee big. And then defeated Georgia last week big. So uh, while the strength of their non-conference opponents has been uh, not that strong, right? not that uh, formidable, 
These wins against the SEC teams, all of whom were ranked at the top ten at the time of the victory, is impressive. Well, and we showed you that LSU game. They won 10 to 9, and ever since then, they've won seven consecutive games by 18 points or more. So they have just dominated their opponents since that LSU game. Here's the change by Campbell at the line on first and goal from the five. Ronnie Brown goes left, down at the one. He doesn't slip. He's in the end zone. Yep. I mean, he got tripped up and fell short of the end zone, but he had a clear path there. Jake Slaughter, he doesn't play a lot, but they need him in there when they got tough situations. Blocking on D'Amico Ryans, excellent block by the fullback. And again, if Ronnie Brown doesn't trip, he walks into the end zone. Brown 11 carries for 40. Carnell Williams for 44. They are undefeated when both run rush in excess of 50. On second down, they'll keep it to Brown. Touchdown, Auburn. from start to finish they didn't dominate in the first half but they are dominating now in the second half John Vaughn for the extra point watch the push Ronnie Brown could have got into play before this time he leaves no doubt and Auburn is up 21 to 6 America's most watched network. 21 unanswered in the second half for the Auburn Tigers. Trying to keep the dream alive. The dream of an undefeated season and a possible national championship. And here's the kick taken by Prothrow a yard in. He will bring it out. Does not quite get to the 20-yard line. I know we've made this point earlier in the game, but I think it's worth revisiting. For Alabama, we talked about the margin of error for their offense. And you got to go back again to that second quarter when they had a first and 10 at the Auburn 15. And then they also had a first and 10 at the Auburn 6. And all they got out of that was three points. And, and you knew that sooner or later, this explosive Auburn offense would get things going and they'd get some rhythm. And, you know, if you get a couple touchdowns or even one touchdown in that situation, you've got a little different ball game. Now here is Spencer Pennington began the season as the number three quarterback. Brody Coyle injured in the tenth quarter of the season against Western Carolina. There's a Matt Cadell out to the left side. Spencer Pennington then uh, backed up Mark Gillen for a couple of games. Came on as a starter. He has yet to throw for more than 150 yards in a game. But I got to tell you, this is the best that I've seen Spencer throw in a game. And uh, there's Brody Coyle, who was just off to a marvelous start before he was injured in the second half of the third game of the year. But th this is the best that Spencer has looked to me in a game. First down, back to throw again, gets a good block, pulls up, finds Cadell. Cadell looks for a block and gets it. Oh, McLean took out two, and here's Matt Cadell. Wait until you get another look at the block of LaRon McLean. He took down two Tigers. With one leg. I mean, he's playing on one leg out there. He's had that right ankle taped and retaped and retaped. Take a look. Again, Pennington, a nice job of moving up in the pocket. And here comes McLean, the double cut block. And then DJ Hall out leading the way for Cadell. He took a short completion and turned it into a huge game. That's a gain of 48 yards. Second pass in excess of 40 for Spencer Pennington in the game. There's McLean going right. Pennington back across the middle incomplete. Intended for Darby. Derek Graves right with him, number 29. And let's spend a moment back in New York. Once again, here's Tim. All right, Vernon, and Todd, a little history lesson here. California's Marshawn Lynch is going to take this hand up. Watch this run. 
and how he reverses his field. Now, remember, Cal has a makeup game on December the 4th against Southern Mississippi to hold on to their BCS. Guys, the only thing missing here was the band wasn't on the field. Where's Joe Cap when you need him, Bird? And Kevin Mon. Second down and 10. Thank you for the history lesson. Here's second. <laughs> on the ground, no. Third down. Boy, Auburn's run defense has been spectacular today. I mean, they have just not given Ken Darby or Aaron Johns anywhere to go. They've just exploded into gaps. They bring their safeties up quickly in the run game. Will Herring and Junior Rose Green. Dave Rader told us that he thought this was probably the best tackling defense that they'd faced this year. And you don't see many missed tackles. Alabama, 29 rushes today, only 35 yards. That's extraordinary. And they came in averaging 215 a game. And now, Alabama looks at a third and 13. Blitz coming. Pennington goes right to Cadell. Cadell at the 17 yard line. It'll be fourth down. Well, four down territory. I mean, a field goal is not really going to help you at this point. You've got to, you've got to keep this drive going and get one in the end zone as quickly as possible. There's still nine minutes left in the ball game, but it's, uh, it's this play right now. They've got to convert here. See, the Spencer Pennington has just thrown for a career high of 156. Cadell right, pro throw left, fourth and six. He can run for it. No, he finds it. Oh, it's dropped at the 10-yard line. Tyrone Prothrow. Oh, you're right. He it looked like he could have run for it. And he tried to dump it to Prothrow, and I don't know if Prothrow was expecting it or not. Spencer Pennington, who has showed pretty good awareness in the pocket, takes off. If he just tucks it and goes and dives, he probably gets the first down. Tyrone Prothrow coming into the game. The team's leading receiver, just a lack of concentration there all the way. So the ball goes over on downs with 8.46 to go. First and 10, Auburn. They get to rest next week. They will face Tennessee in the SEC championship game on CBS in two weeks. Well, Auburn with their convincing win over Georgia last week uh, did climb into a tie for second in the uh, writers and broadcasters poll, the Associated Press. The coaches who, by the way, decided not to make public their votes by a 42 to 39 count have them ranked second. Well, where Auburn has been hurt has been in the computers. That The computers have Oklahoma number one and Auburn number three, and therefore... You know, even though they've moved up in the AP and the coaches, they haven't been able to overtake Oklahoma, even though they have really closed the gap. Ronnie Brown out to the 21. You mentioned Oklahoma. They beat Baylor today handily. Shut them out, 35-0. They will play in the Big 12 championship game against an inferior opponent, quite honestly. It'll either be Iowa State who is six and four if they beat Missouri next week, or Colorado, who is also six and four, but they must beat Nebraska and Lincoln. One of those teams will be the uh, matchup for Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship. Third down, Jason Campbell. He sends Silas Daniels in motion. Daniels in the slot, here's Campbell. Half roll, he's got Daniels wide open. And the tackle made at the 30, but that will be a first down. Ramsey Robinson, number 17 made the tackle. Well, this is a little unusual to see a guy so open. Silas Daniels was wide open out there all by himself. Good form tackle by Ramsey Robinson, but not very good coverage. Uh, it had to be some kind of a breakdown in the Alabama defense on that particular third down play. First down and 10. Daniels breaks out wide to the left side of Roma Shadu, who had the big catch of this ball game, a 50-yarder on the opening drive of the third quarter is wide to the right up the middle to the 40. well recall the mess in the bcs a year ago when lsu and oklahoma wound up playing 
in the final rankings. They were one and two, and USC was left out. Yep. Now, Southern California is undefeated for the year, playing on the Pacific Coast, and there's some thought, Todd, that writers and broadcasters and maybe the coaches have kind of given them that number one spot as a makeup call for them being left out of the championship game a year ago. I think there might be some sentiment that, that has lamed people that way, uh, certainly, because they did get left out last year, and uh, they finished, you know, first in the AP poll, but didn't get to play in the championship game. There's a fumble. Oh, yep. They're calling him down. They're down, calling him down. Down at the 40. I'm not suggesting at all that Southern California is not worthy of right. the number one vote, but I think it's it's been kind of amazing with all of this debate over who's number two, Oklahoma or Auburn, that it's just almost a concession that yeah. USC is number one. We'll take a look at that ball coming out the ground, causing the fumble. Ruled down by contact. I, I think you're right, and, and again, that, that leads me to the point I made last week when we were talking about this in the Georgia game, that I think the preseason polls are, are not good for college football. I don't think there should be an initial poll in college football until the first week of October, because as you take a look, uh, you know where teams were in the preseason and all that's based on is based on what those teams did the year before It's not based on what they've done this season and so USC and Oklahoma started way up there at the top Auburn has Moved dramatically since the start of the season But I, I don't think they should have any poll until the first week of October after you've let them play a month of games And then you really see who's who's for real there was a measurement and Auburn earned the first down for Tommy Tuberville's team of course, it was a year ago this weekend that his team defeated this Alabama ball club, and it was revealed that that mystery plane had flown off yeah. to Louisville in the uh, attempt to hire Bobby Petrino to take Tommy Tuberville's place. And indeed, when that uh, trip was revealed, sentiment went up 99% for Tuberville, and then the win over this Alabama team sealed his position. You and I were there a year ago in the season opener when Southern Cal came in and absolutely throttled Auburn. Auburn then went on to lose to Georgia Tech and had a troubled season until the end of the year. Well, I think all of that stuff they went through made them better. It made Tommy Tuberville better, it made his situation better, and it made his football team better. They, they have handled things great this year all the uh, attention that they're getting now they've just kind of all taken it in its stride and they've been a very focused and determined football team during this run here's the toss sweep right side Cadillac Williams in jail and nailed now let's check the CBS sports line stat of the game total yards 334 since the first quarter my goodness and Alabama 117 after that quick start. Get complete game stats at cbssportsline.com. You know, the other thing about this Auburn football team, and, and it's kind of a consistent thread through championship teams, whether you're talking about college or even in the NFL, they have stayed remarkably healthy, healthy through this season. You look at their offensive line, their center, Jeremy Engel, missed a couple games, but everybody else has played every game. The backs both stayed healthy. Jason Campbell stayed healthy. Defensively, and I compare that to this Alabama team that has basically lost their entire starting backfield to knee injuries, and in this game, have played part of the game with third teamers. Fourth and 13 after the stop, timeout has been called. We'll be right back. In today's SEC moment presented by Sonic, we take a look at the history of the Iron Bowl, which began in 1893. A money dispute suspended the series until 1948. In 71, Pat Sullivan won the Heisman, but Bama won the Battle of the Undefeated. The next year, Auburn won the infamous Punt Bama Punt game. Bear Bryant became college football's winningest coach in 81. Bo Jackson announced his presence the following year. Kicker Van Tiffen saved the day for the Tide in 85. The 89 game was played on the Plains in Auburn for the first time ever. The Tigers completed their last undefeated season in 93. And in 2000, the game returned to Tuscaloosa for the first time in almost a century. And this is the fifth time that these two teams have played in Tuscaloosa. Just a, an ironic little footnote that Alabama has never defeated Auburn in this game, in this town. And it appears that that record will remain intact. 
352 to go in the Iron Bowl. Here's the punt. Pro throw back to return it if possible. It's not going to be. It's going to be out of bounds. Nope. Yes, it did. It went out at the 16-yard line. There is a... There's the spot. Well, this is a fierce rivalry, these two teams. It's uh, hard to emphasize how much this game means to people in this state. And Auburn is going to be talking, I think. We return to Brian Denny with 3.42 to go. 21 to 6, Auburn undefeated for the season. They're in the SEC title game in two weeks. They'll take on Tennessee. And uh, dreams remain for a potential berth in the national championship game and the realization of a national title for the first time since 57. There's a pass left side incomplete. The biggest question about that game for Auburn and defensive coordinator Gene Chizik will be what quarterback will he face in that game? Rick Clawson, the quarterback today in their game against Vanderbilt. Of course, Eric Ainge was injured in the Notre Dame game. His throwing shoulder, Brent Schaefer, a broken right collarbone, his non-throwing shoulder uh, the week before against South Carolina. Will either one or both of those guys be healthy for the championship game? Here's Pennington for pro throw. Big toss out to the 32-yard line. That will be a first down. That's a gain of 18. Well, we talked about that 19... 57 championship team coached by Shug Jordan. They won the title, finishing 10 and 0. Shut out six opponents. They gave up 28 points all season long. They led 34 to nothing at halftime of this game and wound up winning it in the Iron Bowl by a count of 40 to nothing. Here's Pennington. Pumps. Down that that defeat by the way led to a it was the end of ears Whitworth's career at <laughs> Alabama yeah. and a guy named Paul Bear Bryant came in first and ten we had a chance last night uh, the the Alabama athletic staff led by athletic director Mal Moore gave a wonderful dinner for Auburn retiring athletic director David Housel and with no sense of timing whatsoever a timeout has been called which means that we're going to stretch this story over a commercial break. We'll be back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Argent Mortgage. Ballpark Franks. The United States Army. And by Fix NyQuil. This day began with Alabama legend Joe Namath running the football out. Mentioned that we had a chance to spend the evening uh, in his company last night at a testimonial dinner. And there were several tables for eight. And after the introductions were made, Joe Namath looked over at David Housel and said, War Eagle. And David Housel from Auburn looked back at Joe Namath and said, Roll Tide. It was a nice moment. Here's Pennington sliding down as he crosses the 50 and gets to the 47. Now the lineup tonight on CBS. The Amazing Race, and that's followed by 48 Hours Mystery. Tonight's lineup on CBS. Second down and three. Pennington back. One hopper, incomplete. Now you were talking about Jeremy Ingle. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I love about this game is, is just the passion. There's Jeremy Ingle. He's playing hurt. He has a severe high left ankle sprain that he got in the Kentucky game, but he's playing through it. Now, he's a guy who grew up a huge Alabama fan. When he was 10 years old, he went to every game of the 1992 season at home. He was in Birmingham for the SEC championship game. He was at the Sugar Bowl when they won the national championship. He at once said... He would turn down a scholarship to Auburn in order to walk on at Alabama. Well, as he grew up, he ended up walking on at Auburn, and he toiled as a you know, red shirt and a scout team player, and now he's a starting center. There's Pennington rolling out, sliding down for a first down. Well, these Alabama seniors have been through uh, 
four and five years that uh, have really been difficult. 18 of them playing their last home game. They have posted a winning record. Three winning seasons despite being placed on probation. They will make their second bowl appearance. They went through a cascade of coaches like you can't believe. Mike DeBose, followed by Dennis Franchoni, who took a hike over to Texas A&M. Mike Price, who had to resign in disgrace here. Uh, who has found redemption at the University of Texas at El Paso. Limited scholarships, no bowl. Uh, they have achieved much in they their sure careers have. here. And Wesley Britt is one of those guys that just epitomizes it. The senior, Cornelius Wortham, took a medical redshirt last year because he had the dislocated elbow, came back, has been the team's leading tackler this year. A lot of heart, a lot of grit on this Alabama team. Here's Pennington going left, finding Crothrow. And he's going to get inside the 20 near the 17-yard line as the clock reaches the two-minute mark. And I, I said this earlier, and I know this is mop-up right now. I mean, a 21-6 lead, Auburn's going to let you complete some passes, but this is the best I've seen Spencer Pennington play all season. I mean, he has played a pretty solid game. He had the interception down in the red zone that really hurt them, but he's thrown the ball better in game situations than I've seen him all year. That one near the 10, it's incomplete. Pennington uh, not only over 150 yards for the first time in his career, that was Ezekiel Knight. He has surpassed 200 yards, 16 of 28 now for 208 yards. A little bit high, but it's a tall wide receiver, Ezekiel Knight, and a hard-hitting safety, Junior Rosegreen, there to make the contact. Third and five. Pennington offered a scholarship by Dennis Franchoni. He thought he was going to be going to Mississippi State. And uh, during a practice for the state championship game his senior year, Franchoni offered him a scholarship at Alabama. Here's the pass in the corner for Cadell, the adjustment. And is it intercepted? No, it's knocked down as incomplete. Zach Gilbert, a walk-on, number 38. Well, Auburn came after Pennington that time. He made the right read, throwing outside. But Gilbert in perfect position. Gilbert is a redshirt freshman, a former walk-on, has gotten a chance here in the last couple weeks to uh, compete for playing time. You see Mike Shula saw that one go awry, but really outstanding position by the young corner. Fourth and five. Knight and D.J. Hall are wide right. Pro throw wide to the left with Cadell. Into the end zone. Caught it. Touchdown. D. Well, you go for two, 21-14, if yeah. you make it, or do they go for one? And then... Well, no, I think, you, I think you go for one, because if you miss the two, then you have to score twice. So right, I think okay. you kick it, and then you, uh, you try to get the ball back again on the onside kick. Ryan Bostick. One twenty-six to go in the ball game. They've been stopped on fourth down a couple times. Not this time. DJ Hall times his jump. He fights Montavis Pitts for the ball, and Alabama finally gets a touchdown in the ball game. <laughs> you know, I just remember you saying, "God bless him." Oh yes, I did. <laughs> well, it was Thanksgiving after all. Here's the onside kick. Going left, there's Courtney Taylor up in the air. Nice catch. Boy, he had his legs taken out from under him as he made the grab. What better guy to have out there than your team's leading receiver? And he's injured. On your hands, team. Goes up high. You've got to do that because if, if he doesn't catch it high and it hits the ground, it's a free-for-all. Taylor's still down. Now he's up. He's had a nice ball game. Yes, he has. Now uh, Mike Shula on the sideline. Little ballet move. He does that better than Philip Fulmer does. <laughs> By the way, Mike's father, Don, uh, came in last night at around uh, the midnight hour. 
He and his wife, uh, fresh off of another cruise. Don's enjoying retirement. Mm -hmm. So he's here in the stands, or in the, probably up in the press box area. Now time for a knee. Well, a 21-13 victory, it would appear. Timeout is called. That's the Alabama final timeout of the evening. They trail by eight. They do not have the ball. Six-nothing Alabama at the half. The opening drive of the third quarter provided us our play of the game presented by Wrangler five-star premium denim. Here's Rod Bramlett of the Auburn Radio Network. 45-yard line. Here's Campbell. Takes the handle. Will throw. This time goes deep. Aroma should do down. Bill makes the catch of the 15 to the 10 to the 5. And down he goes. That led to a Carnell Williams touchdown. The extra point was good. Tommy Tuberville's team went up 7-6. to six. They lead at 21-13 now. You know, and you mentioned a 21-13 lead. That's what it appears it's going to end at. And a lot of people around college football and around the country might look at this and say, not a very impressive win for the number two team in the country for Auburn, trying to state their case. But people that would say that have no appreciation or understanding for the intensity of this rivalry going on the road against your arch rival and winning at any cost is impressive in this game Tommy Tuberville and the Auburn Tigers about to go 11 and 0 mentioned last week he got a smile out of some folks he played collegiately a non-scholarship player at Southern Arkansas University he was a member of the mule riders <laughs> He just likes saying that. Don't I do. I, yes. Yes, I do. And I probably will say it again in the SEC championship <laughs> game. There's a slight chance. <laughs> Jason Campbell down. 35 seconds to go. Tennessee won the national championship in 1998. Got a big break in route in their game against Arkansas. Tommy Tupperville's team had that come from, from behind victory. Missed an extra point in the game against LSU. A penalty call. They got a second chance. John Vaughn kicked it. That, they believe, ignited the season. That win over LSU. Well, again, at that time in the season, LSU was the defending national champion. And everybody expected LSU to be the team to beat in the SEC West. Not Auburn. Now Tommy Tupperville's team has called time out. Well, they just wanted to get the clock down as far as they could so that they could just run out the clock on this fourth down play. I don't think they want to punt the ball necessarily. I mean, they, they could, but they just want to make sure that time is out if they take a knee one more time. Al Borges, fourth offensive coordinator in as many years. You know one thing about that, too? I mean, we've talked a lot about Al Borges, and rightly so. But you know who else needs to be mentioned? Hugh Nall. It's Hugh Nall and Steve Ensminger, the two guys last year. Hugh Nall was the coordinator. Steve Ensminger was calling the plays, and it didn't work out. And Tommy Tuberville had to make a change, and he brought in Al Borges, and he kind of, you know, obviously demoted Hugh Nall by moving him back to being the offensive line coach. And not only did he embrace that, but Hugh Nall embraced Al Borges, and he knew that he could help Auburn be a better football team. I think his humility and how he handled that situation is, is another key component to this magical season for the Auburn Tigers. There it comes. <laughs> I don't think he minds. <laughs> I wonder if Stanley will get Tommy Tuberville to dance. Stanley's one of those dancers on the Auburn team. He might get Tommy to join him in a little two-step down there. Fourth and 21. Jason Campbell will run out the clock. The Auburn Tigers go to 11 and 0 in the 2004 season. They will play in the SEC championship game against Tennessee. The dream is still alive. The potential birth in a national championship game and the possibility of a national championship. And a little mess at the middle of the field. Now, Terry Jones Jr., one of the strength coaches, is out there in the middle of it, trying to, to keep the teams away from each other. 
They got it under control. Yep. Now our player of the game, the quarterback, the fifth year senior from Taylorsville, Mississippi, Jason Campbell. Just another yeah. terrifically efficient game, Todd. This keeps doing it. He and Tommy Tupperville are with Tracy Wolfson. Trace? Thanks a lot, guys. I'll start with Jason. Jason, congratulations. What a second half. Did you feel you had to come out here and carry this team on your shoulders? Yeah, you know, they was doing a great job stopping our run. So, you know, we had to go to our passing game. And, you know, once I got comfortable and got into a rhythm, you know, it just felt like everything was in slow motion. You beat Bama. How big of a win is this, not only for the team and the program, but for the fans? Well, 11 and 0. Auburn hadn't been 11 and 0 in a long time. And it's it's been a fun year for our players and our fans. You know, the, the big thing about this game is, you know, you're always going to be hard fought. We knew we were going to be in for a battle day. Alabama played well. We came out and played the second half like we should have the first half. A lot of oranges all over this field. How bad do you want to get to that national championship game? We want to get there bad. We're going to work at it awfully hard in the next two weeks. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank congratulations you. to the both of you. Thank you. And our congratulations to Jason Campbell, Tommy Tuberville, the Tigers of Auburn. They have a very convincing second half. They win it by a 21 to 13 count. Next time we see them, we'll be in Atlanta. For Tracy Wolfson and Todd Blackledge, I'm Vern Lundquist saying good night from Tuscaloosa, Tim Brando's next.